This QNET 99 Mini LED TV is blessed with the highest number of local dimming zones we've ever counted on an LG LED LCD. But is its picture quality good enough to compete with the best? Let's find out in this technical review. The LG QNET 99 Mini LED TV is equipped with an IPS type LCD panel which delivers wider viewing angles than conventional VA type LCD panels but also unfortunately weaker contrast and shallower black level as well. If we disable LED local dimming on this LG QNET 99 so that we are measuring the native contrast of the display you can see that once we align peak white to 120 candelas per square meter, black level measures 0.124 candelas per square meter, which gives us a contrast ratio of just under 1000 to 1, which is typical of an IPS LCD panel. And if we engage local dimming, then the black level will improve to around 0.012 candelas per square meter because this LG Q99 is equipped with a very high number of local dimming zones because of its mini LED technology. And if we put out our own custom order test pattern containing a small white box crawling horizontally and then vertically against the borders of a black background, we counted 60 vertical columns and 30 horizontal rows, giving us a total of 1,800 local dimming zones which is very high by LED LCD standards. Now, besides a high number of local dimming zones, another important attribute that contributes to effective local dimming is the local dimming algorithm. And if we put up this familiar scene from Gravity where Sandra Bullock is tumbling through space, you can see that even though the LG QNET 99 has a very high number of local dimming zones, there are visible backlight fluctuations with various zones and not knowing what to do turning on and off against the background of space which is a bit grayer than VA type LCD panel let alone OLED and if we move on to the next clip to the Revenant this is in HDR you can see that the subtitles are dimmed down to a significant extent which is fair enough you know to try and control blooming but again there are various areas of backlight fluctuations that may prove to be quite distracting to the viewer and also the shadow detail look a bit more compressed and indistinct because of the shallower black level of IPS. If we look at Batman vs Superman, this is fairly impressive in terms of the local dimming algorithm from the QNET 99. First of all, the top and bottom letterbox bars are maintained fairly black. The bright lights in this scene offset against the blooming, so you don't actually see the blooming that much. And because there are various bright elements in the scene to offset against the weaker blacks, it actually presents still quite a strong contrast, even beside another V8-type LCD panel, which is very impressive. Now, on previous LG LED LCD televisions, when you display a near-black window, the LEDs would be shut down because of over-aggressive local dimming algorithm. But on the QNET 99, this has been rectified. And you can see here, even when I am displaying a 1% above black window against a black background, the window is still displayed. But again, because of the weaker native contrast of IPS LCD panel and also just how hard the local dimming algorithm has to work to compensate for this, you can see that the borders of this rectangular window becomes blurred, giving us a very glowy effect. And at the other end of the contrast ratio spectrum, you know, if we display this luminance loading test pattern from the Spears and Bunsell UHD HDR benchmark disk, you can see that as the window is smaller, the local dimming algorithm is keeping it dimmed down. So let's say small HDR elements, they may not have the HDR impact that you would expect from a high need LED LCD display. But, you know, as the window expands, then the brightness will kick in, especially at 10% window and also 18% window sizes, because 
probably those are relevant for test pattern measurements. And another advantage of LED LCD display compared with OLED is full screen brightness. And here it can get fairly bright full screen as well. Now, because of LG's local dimming algorithm, in some scenes, especially with some bright objects against a darker background, there can be a glow around the brighter object which may have an unintended effect. So for example, in the scene from The Greatest Showman, there is an aura glow around Jenny Lin which is certainly not present in the original source material. Next, let's talk about color accuracy. On this challenging color checker SG chart where 140 patches were measured, we obtain an average delta error of 1.89 which is fairly good but there are a few errors that exceeded the humanly perceptible threshold of delta error 3. Now with local dimming it is very difficult to implement 3D light that can actually compensate for various levels of backlight especially with this high number of zones. So at the end of the day the Colors still look fairly natural, skin tones look realistic, you know, in this scene from Skyfall and across all types of content that I watched on this TV. This coverage is sponsored by Richard Sounds Manchester. Call 0333 900 0086 for the best prices and expert advice for TVs, AV and Hi-Fi. With True Motion disabled, the LG Q99 correctly applied 55 pull-down to present 24 frames per second films smoothly without telescopic each other and because of the inherent motion blur of LED LCD displays it exhibited less frame hole stutter than OLED TV which is ironically cursed because of its near instantaneous pixel response time and when it came to 50Hz broadcast material in the UK especially with mixed edits once you engage through motion, it will cause some sort of micro stutter, especially during hand gestures, facial movements. So I would generally advise people to switch off through motion when watching 50 Hertz broadcast content in the UK. When it came to high frame rate content, such as 50 frames per second or 60 frames per second, with true motion disabled, motion resolution came in at the sample and whole baseline of 300 lines. Engaging true motion will increase motion resolution to 600 lines and if you are so inclined you can even turn on the Motion Pro black frame insertion to boost motion resolution to 1080 lines or even higher but I saw quite a lot of flickering in bright scenes so I would be inclined to just switch it off. And another commendable thing to mention about True Motion on LG's 2021 TVs including the QNet 99 is that you know they have introduce the cinematic movement option which tries to improve the judder in 24 frames per second movies without significant sort of bright effect and I think you know from the interpolation side of things it also incurs less interpolation artifacts than most other motion composite frame interpolation solutions I've seen from other manufacturers this year. Next, let's talk about video processing. Now, this being an 8K TV, I think it is very unlikely that many people will be using it to watch standard definition content. But for what it's worth, the upscaling on this TV is actually fairly good. It is not as aggressive or over sharpened as, let's say, Samsung's 8K televisions. So standard definition content, they still look passable. And then, you know, high def content will look fairly good as well on this TV. It looks natural without any excessive ringing or artifacting in terms of the art conversion to an 8K panel. In terms of video-based deinterlacing, jaggy suppression was above average with only some jagged edges showing on the third bouncing bar in this HQV benchmark test pattern. And with cinema screen enabled, which allows for film mode deinterlacing, the TV correctly detected and processed 32 and 22 cadences. So you won't see line tweeter or jaggies in film-based interlaced material. And the QNet 99 passed full chroma bandwidth in this 1080p test pattern from the Spears & Munsell HD benchmark disc. Like on many LED LCD televisions, screen uniformity is the Achilles heel in my opinion on this QNet 99. Once we cycled through full field grey slides, we saw noticeable dirty screen effect or DSE. 
which is also present when we turn the corners in Dirt 5, we could see the dirty screen effect manifesting itself in the sky, which depending on your tolerance towards such uniformity issues can be fairly distracting. For HDR peak brightness measured 1300 nits on a 10% window after calibration to D65 white point and 540 nits full fill. DCI-P3 color gamut coverage came in at 96% UV, while right to 20 coverage measured 75%, with the spectral power distribution showing beautifully distinct red, green, and blue waveforms because of the quantum dot element, in addition to the nanocell proprietary material that is used by LG. Bright HDR scenes look good because of the lack of ABL and you can certainly use LG's dynamic tone mapping to retain more specular highlight detail in bright scenes containing elements close to 4000 nits but bear in mind that it will also brighten the darker regions and mid-tones in other middling scenes. Native 10-bit gradation on this TV is decent but not as good as Sony's although you can use the smooth gradation decontouring filter to smooth out in-content posterization, and it is fairly effective. When it came to Dolby Vision support, we tested this dark scene from the matrix and found that in the more accurate cinema picture mode, these low APL scenes can take on a very glowy effect due to the native contrast of IPS panel and also LG's local dimming algorithm. But once we switch to the Dolby Vision Cinema Home picture preset, which is obviously more inaccurate because it is brighter, but because of this increased brightness, it actually allows the local dimming algorithm to better define bright objects against backgrounds which should be kept dark and therefore it allows for better definition and a less muddy effect so perhaps there is a case for engaging dynamic tool mapping for even hdr10 content even though it is going to be inaccurate but at least it may allow the picture to overcome the limitations of the ips panel together with the local dimming algorithm in game optimizer mode, Impolite measured 14.5 milliseconds on a 60 frames per second video signal and a very low 6.5 milliseconds on a 120 frames per second video signal, which is super responsive. Now you need to be aware that this LG QNet99 mini LED TV is compatible with ALM or auto low latency mode but not VRR or variable refresh rate as you can see from this Xbox information screen. Otherwise all four HDMI 2.1 ports support 4K 120Hz gaming even in Dolby Vision. Now when we try to calibrate the TV for playing HDIG compliant games from the Xbox we were alarmed to find that the black level looked quite grey, as if the local dimming was not enabled. And once we went into the picture menu, you can see that the local dimming setting is greyed out. And this was borne by the fact that once we started Dirt 5, you know, we saw an elevated black level with no evidence of local dimming kicking in. And it turns out that engaging ALM will disable local dimming on this LG QN99 mini LED TV. So the solution is to just go into the Xbox menu and disable auto low latency mode. After which you can see that the local dimming is active and will keep blacks inky. And overall, I think that the local dimming on this LG QN99 was not as neutered as much as what we normally see on Samsung QLEDs with game mode engaged, which is a good thing. So you can still experience fairly inky blacks in the right areas of the screen. On, let's say, Dirt 5, this is played from the PS5 without ALM, obviously. And when it came to the game optimizer mode, there is a similar game dashboard as LG's 2021 OLED TVs. But if you scroll through the menu, you can see that some of the options that are present on OLED, for example, the boost mode, and also the 
OLED motion, pro, black frame variable intensity, black frame insertion, toggle is missing from here and not to mention obviously the VRR, FreeSync and G-Sync toggle as well. So I think you know if you really want the best gaming experience, you will still have to go with an LG OLED, you know, despite the probably irrational fear of burn-in. Now this being an 8K TV, obviously we have to assess how this QNet99 handles 8K content. So first we put up an 8K horizontal grill pattern and the TV fully resolved 8K resolution. But note that you have to go into the HDMI deep color submenu and manually engage 8K. Otherwise, you know, you won't be able to select 8K resolution from, let's say, the NVIDIA control panel. In terms of the edit, engaging 8K will actually enable DSC or display stream compression up to 24 gigabits per second as you can see here and we also try our hand at playing some 8k videos on YouTube and certainly we managed to play some 4320p content from YouTube so it is certainly compatible with the AV1 codec for 8k YouTube content consumption and I think 8k content from YouTube is the only 8k content available to the vast majority of consumers these days. We ran the display HDR app in 4320p and the gradation looked acceptable and when it came to chroma reproduction it is somewhere between 422 and 444, maybe because of the 8K subpixel structure. After this, I shall walk you through the design of the TV. Now, this being a full array local dimming LED LCD TV, naturally, the chassis isn't the thinnest, but at least there is a brush metallic trim to give it an attractive appearance and there is an LG QNET Mini LED inscription at the bottom right corner of the screen. The panel is supported on a crescent stand. The connections are found on the left rear of the display, including four HDMI 2.1 ports, each with the full HDMI 2.1 bandwidth of 48 gigabits per second and even with DSC support of up to 24 gigabits per second, which will allow up to 8K 60Hz resolution. And just like LG's 2021 OLED TVs, there is the usual WebOS 6.0 platform and also the new Magic Remote included. Let's sum up. The QNET99 Mini LED TV is comfortably the best LED LCD LG has ever built in terms of picture quality thanks largely to its very high number of local dimming zones, which allows for inkier blacks and higher contrast with the right type of content. However, this doesn't mean that you should rush out and buy one, because at a strict price of £6,000 at the time we filmed this video in July 2021, you can basically buy a 77-inch LG C1 or G1 OLED, whose pixel-level illumination control will deliver superior picture quality over any incremental improvement from 8K resolution, and you can still save at least one grand in the process. 8K is about as relevant as the P in pneumonia for two reasons. One, the severe lack of native 8K content. And two, how close you have to sit to the screen to reap the full benefits of 8K resolution. If you are not keen on OLED due to the risk of permanent burn-in, however minute, there are other better LED LCD alternatives on the market, all featuring VA-type LCD panel. The weakest link on the LG QNET99 is its IPS LCD panel. While IPS may have sufficed with SDR content in years gone by, its native contrast ratio of 1000 to 1 is simply not good enough to cut it in the era of HDR. To compensate for the weaker native contrast of IPS, the local dimming algorithm on the QNET99 has to work extra hard to control 1800 zones, leading to visible backlight instability we strongly feel that a lot of the local dimming issues we see on LG's Full Array Local Dimming or FALD LED LCD TVs, including the QNET99, can be solved by switching to a VA-type LCD panel. But this won't be an easy undertaking since LG Electronics is historically tied to LG Display, which produces IPS LCD panels. Although we would like to point out that if Samsung Visual Display Division can swallow their pride, 
and contemplate buying WRGB OLED panels from LG Display, we don't see why LG Electronics can't consider adopting VA LCD panels for the company's flagship LED LCD televisions. Most other TV brands, Samsung, Sony, Philips, TCL, are all using VA panels on their flagship LED LCD models. Of course, another obstacle is whether there's any incentive for LG to build a better LED LCD which may cannibalize the sales of the company's profit-generating OLED TVs. This is why the progress of LED LCD models at Sony, Philips and Panasonic have stalled over the past few years. To build an LED LCD TV that can even begin to compete with OLED's picture quality, you have to put in full array local dimming, a powerful backlight, perhaps quantum dot technology, so much so that it doesn't even make financial sense anymore, especially when LCD panel prices are becoming more expensive. Not when you can just buy an OLED panel from LG Display and take advantage of the true blacks, vibrant colors, white viewing angles, and ultra slim design afforded by the self emissive display technology. To watch some of our comparison videos involving LG's LED LCD TVs, please click here for our playlist and I will see you in the next video.